Alright, so welcome back to the channel guys. It is me 8744. So today guys, we'll be doing our Brazil downfall video guys. So today we'll be discussing about the failures of Brazil for every single World Cup after 2002 and we'll be dis discussing about what went wrong in each of the editions and talk to you guys. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below guys. Like I said guys, I'll try to do this kind of video kind of style this say. You know, maybe like every two or three months or so. I'm not sure. Maybe every month if I have time. I'll try to do it every month. And considering this one is pretty much like late July-ish, I'm going to consider this one for August. Okay? So, actually, you know what? We'll just say late July. You know, so the next one will be like late August. Okay? Anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. And there will be time steps in the description below, guys, for your convenience. So, let's start with the 2006 World Cup. Okay, so 2006, when went wrong for Brazil. Now, before I even discuss went wrong, let's talk about the context here from an end to this. So, obviously, Brazil had just come off winning the World Cup 2002. They had just won it. You know, everyone was looking amazing, everything. And the vibes were amazing, you know, because 2006 was pretty much the same, the team. And you still had the likes of Ronaldo. You still had the likes of Kaka, Ronaldinho. You know, you still had a very star-dusted team. And there was expectations high that Brazil would be able to defend the title. And we know it's very difficult to do back-to-back. -back. It's not very easy to do back-to-back. -back. And but generally, a lot of teams fail to do so because of how difficult it is. You know, every four years, teams strengthen, teams decline. And Brazil could break it. You know, and I believe Brazil actually have done back-to-back -back before. I think they did the 1958 and 1962. So they have actually done back-to-back -back before. So could Brazil do this again in their history? And the short answer is no. They were not able to. And Brazil were ousted by Zinedine Zidane's France team. And let's talk about exactly what happened. So the issue with Brazil is that in the group stage, in the round of 16, things were easy for them. You know, I believe they faced Ghana, I think, in 2006, uh, World Cup round of 16. And they had a relatively easy group. You know, they topped the group nine points, I believe. And the issue is that when they went up against a France team, this France team was wanting to make a point because obviously France had just come off a losing 2002 World Cup. They had just got grouped. It was an embarrassment. A lot of the French media were not happy and they wanted to rectify and go on a deep run 2006, which we all know they ended up going to the final and losing to final to eventual winners, Italy. Anyways, you know, and I just think that for me, for France, they were just on it. They just, they were on it on the day. Zinedine Zidane was amazing that game, even though he didn't score in the d game against Brazil. He was still fantastic. He was running the strings in the midfield. He was creating chances. And obviously, Thierry Henry got the lone goal in the game. And it's one of the best games. You know, I believe FIFA is actually on their YouTube channel. You can watch the full match of the game on their YouTube channel. So you guys can check it out. The full match is there. I, I need to check it out. Uh, I recommend to check it out someday because it's an amazing match. You know, I have to watch it. I need to watch it many times. And the issue for Brazil in 2006 World Cup was primarily the fact they were playing European-based football. And what made Brazil so good was that they're playing the Joko Benito. They were playing the Joko Benito way. And the European style is just not what Brazil is capable of doing. And we're going to see this being a recurring theme, guys. That Brazil just cannot play the European style at all. Because they were terrible against France. Like, in France, they only really showed for the last couple of minutes. They were terrible against France for majority of the game. And the fact that they were so bad was shocking. Because many people thought Brazil could at least reach the semis. You know, maybe not necessarily win it. But at least reach the semis or reach the final. And yet they went on the quarterfinals. Which is really big disappointment considering that team that they had on paper was amazing. You know, like I said, it still had the same players from 2002. Okay? Yeah, so 2006 was ultimately a huge failure. 2010. This one was very also very sad as well. This one is almost like 2006 some ways. And yeah. Anyways, so Dunga was a coach for Brazil. For this edition and he left out of so many controversial players he left out Ronaldinho guys Ronaldinho which is ridiculous he also didn't include Neymar which is also shocking these are like the two most high profile players he left out there are some other high profile players he also left out and you know Neymar Ronaldinho are probably the most notable ones you know there are probably some there are there's there are other high profile players he also left out but Neymar, Ronaldinho are the most high-profile players. And the fact that he didn't even select those players for the World Cup, there was already controversy. There was That was already bad enough. You know, 
And once again, sort of like 2006 World Cup, Brazil cruised through group stage. They, I think they topped the group at seven points this time, not nine. Still, though, they did it in the round of 16. They they destroyed, um, they they got past for these, you know. And then the quarterfinals in which they went up against Netherlands. And this was the Netherlands team that was, you know, really good. You know, obviously, they reached the World Cup final, and, you know, they lost to eventual winner Spain. And this was a Netherlands team that was amazing. You had the likes of Schneider that was there, uh, Robin as well, you know, and it was a very, very good Dutch team. But the issue was that, once again, guys, Brazil had a good team and still lost. And I think the big issue this time around was more the coach. I think the coach has a large issue to blame for this because he didn't choose the best players for this. And when you're not selecting players like Neymar or Waldinho, you're going to come under screw. You're going to come under criticism, you know. And I just feel like for me, this was such a such a disappointment for Brazil because I feel like had he had put those players as he should have, who knows? Brazil could have maybe beat Dutch, and we could have had a semifinal. Um, they could have been the semifinal uh, versus I think was it Germany? I think Germany. Yeah, I think Germany. They would have played. No, no, no. Sorry, Spain played against Germany. I think Netherlands would have played against. Um, who did they play in the semifinals? I think they played against Uruguay. Yeah, they played against Uruguay. Yeah, 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 that's right. They played against Uruguay. And obviously, Netherlands beat Uruguay. So, yeah, they could have played against Uruguay. And who knows? Brazil could have reached the final and played against Spain. Obviously, we never know to this day. You know, but um, the point being is that Brazil really underperformed in the 2010 World Cup. And considering this was a Dutch team that, you know, Brazil should be better than on paper is really, really sad. You know, they lost to the Dutch. And once again, um, I believe the um, the decisive goal was a goal that came from the corner. I believe it was a header into the box. I believe it was a goal from the corner. I think so. Yeah. Moving on to 2014. Now 2014, guys. In my opinion, Brazil really overperformed in this one. And in my opinion, I don't think Brazil were really that great. Even though they were one of the favorites because of the fact the World Cup was being hosted at home, and this was a huge opportunity for Brazil to win a World Cup. You know, especially given the fact that. Home field advantage. You have the crowd behind you. Everyone thinks it's in your favor. Neymar is picked for this one. And it was just looking great. You know, then obviously you had the coach that won the 2002 World Cup. I forgot his name. Um, what's his name again? I, I'm probably going to remember this once I edit. But, um, you know, he obviously won the World Cup, obviously, 2002. So, you know, things were looking great. Brazil were looking great. And everything was looking great, you know. And you still had the likes of, you know, Thiago Silva that was there, Cesar, you know. And Brazil were looking favorites, you know. And then the World Cup, man. Let's discuss what happened. Oh, yeah, Scolari. Scolari's the coach. Yeah, that's right. Scolari, man, has a lot to blame, you know. And I feel like for me, what he did in that semifinal against Germany is embarrassment. How he set up the team to be exposed like that. To get, I mean, you can't get exposed in that kind of fashion, especially at home, and destroy 7-1. I understand you're missing players like Thiago Silva and Neymar, which were both injured for the game, but the issue is that you still allowed them to dominate you, you know? And here's the thing, 7-1, see, here's the thing, you can still lose, but you don't have to lose by that big of a scoreline, you know? And Brazil were not that great in the knockout stage, because, yes, they topped the group with Croatia, Mexico, and Cameroon, but... They didn't do well in the round of 16. They nearly lost against Chile. Chile had a lot of opportunities and extra time to beat them. And then in the quarterfinals, they played against um, Colombia and had required David Luiz to score an insane goal from a free kick. You see what I'm talking about, guys? That Brazil weren't even that great in 2014, guys. Yes, it may have been the furthest of the five, which we'll discuss in the video, but it really was probably the most luckiest one because Brazil were not that great. And like I said, guys, even if Thiago Silva and Neymar did play against Germany, I'm sorry, that Germany team was fantastic. It was a great team. You know, Thomas Muller, Schweinsteiger, Tony Cruz, Manuel Neuer. That team was in their peak, Boateng. Like, let's not forget, guys, Germany was very good that time, okay? Germany was amazing that time. It would have been a miracle if Brazil had even been in Germany. Okay, now, would the score have been as bad as the two played? Probably not. But they still probably would lose, given how good Germany was. And I think the fact that Brazil lost this final and almost... and If Argentina did, if Germany didn't beat Argentina in the final, this would have been a huge L for Brazil. Allowing your rivals to win the World Cup at your stadium? Yeah, they have to thank Mario Gatza. 
Brazilian fans should be thanking Mario Gatsa that never happened. Because if that happened, oh man, that would have been embarrassing. Obviously, we know Brazil would eventually allow Argentina to win on their rival, to win on their soil. But that was for the Copa America. But anyways, getting back to this one, you know. And I still think to this day, guys, I still don't think Brazil have fully recovered from 7-1. I still don't think they have. And I think for me, like I said, Scolari, man, he's got a lot to blame. Because let's be real, guys. The guy was past his prime. He wasn't a great manager. He was only picked for this World Cup because he had 1,002. The guy was past his prime. It's 12 years later. Really? Like, come on, man. Like, it's just it was just a sentimental hire. It wasn't a great managerial decision. And Brazil FA should be ashamed of doing that. Because that was embarrassing. 2014. And this exit actually led them to go out in the 2015 Copa America group stage. And I think the 2016 Copa America group stage as well. So, yeah. Embarrassments, embarrassments. And now, we talk about 2018. 2018, man. 2018. See, the thing with Brazil in 2018 is that we have to keep in mind that they were one of the favorites. You know, they had breezed through qualifiers. They were, I believe they were the first nation to qualify for the World Cup. And it was looking great. Neymar wasn't at his peak, you know, playing for PSG. And he had just come off an amazing 2017-2018 season, you know. That was an amazing season for him individually, statistically speaking. And he was a fantastic, you know. Then you have the likes of Allison, who has been amazing in goal, you know, for Roma, making that deep Champions League run. Then obviously... You know, you have Thiago Silva, that's still pretty good. You know, then you have Danny Alves. Then you have Gabriel Jesus, Firmino. Like, this Brazil team was looking fantastic from start to finish, you know. And I think we saw how good they were in the 2018 World Cup. You know, they started off the World Cup with a one all draw against Switzerland. Then they played against um, Costa Rica, won 2 0, scored late goals. Then against Serbia, they won 2 0. And round 16, they played against Mexico. And then coming up against Belgium where they played against Belgium. A team that was also very good at the World Cup. They were one of the most highly entertaining teams in all. You know, they were scoring goals for fun. They had just come off the 3-2 loss against Japan. I mean, sorry, 3-2 win against Japan, having to come from behind, of course. And the thing about that Brazil team is that we all expected them to beat Belgium. Given how Belgium really struggled against Japan for the first couple of minutes, for the first um, hour or so, you know, and Japan, Belgium pretty much made a comeback. Because of because of Japan's Japan's um because of the aerial the height you know Belgian players were significantly taller you know that actually was a huge advantage that Japan couldn't you know and I just think it for me was interesting you know and for me one of the big issues was the wasteful in final third they were very very wasteful in the final third yes they were fantastic in the group stage around sixteen but we saw in the um, the games that they should have scored more than two goals you know Brazil never scored more than two goals in any of the group stage games. In the knockout stage games, you know, and that's just a, a concerning because 2 0 margin is one of the most dangerous leads to have, you know. And while they didn't give up a lead necessarily, they were not able to score as many goals as they should have, you know. And then obviously, set pieces, man, set pieces came into play big time, you know. Obviously, the Switzerland goal they scored right off of set piece, and then obviously, um, Belgium also did the same thing too with the Fernandinho goal that was also set piece. You can also account for injuries as well as suspensions. Obviously, we have to keep in mind Casemiro was not available against Belgium because he was suspended. And we saw Fernandinho took his place. And we all know how much of a disaster job Fernandinho did. He was disastrous in that goal, you know, scoring their own goal. And then obviously, uh, Marcelo giving up, giving KDB a free goal as well. That was also terrible defending there. Ba basically, like I said, guys, Brazil just couldn't handle. There were too many important players that didn't play. And that led to them, their downfall, you know. And I think Casemiro, we saw how important Casemiro is. Because Casemiro is one of the best CDMs, you know. Like, the guy is instrumental to Real Madrid, you know. And we saw how much Casemiro was missed against Belgium. And how his presence was so necessary. Okay? And now, we move on to 2022. Probably the one that Brazilians are most frustrated with. And if, this was, if there was a World Cup that Brazilians wish they had won, I think this one was the one they wished. This one was the one they really, really regretting the most. Because here's the thing, guys. Brazil had an amazing team. I mean, look at the team that they had. You had the likes of Allison and goal. Marquinhos, Thiago Silva, Casemiro, Bruno Guimaraes, Paqueta, Vinicius Jr., Rodrigo, Neymar, Anthony, Rafinha, Gabriel Jesus, Richarlison. 
I mean, the team was stacked. Okay? The team was ridiculously stacked. And yet, they underperformed and they lost against a team that they really shouldn't have. And they indirectly gave Argentina the World Cup. You could almost indirectly say they had. Because had they been in Croatia, Brazil versus Argentina, they could have stopped Argentina from winning the World Cup. You know? And here's the thing. We all saw how Orgy were able to dismantle Croatia with ease. Brazil weren't. And that is the thing we're going to talk about in this particular thing. I think one of the biggest issues was character. Brazil just didn't have enough character in that World Cup 2022. Because, yeah, they breezed through against South Korea. They breezed through against Serbia. They breezed through. um, They got the job done against Switzerland. But the issue is that Brazil were never in a position where, okay, we have to get it done. We have to figure out a way to win this. Because look, compare them to Argentina. This is a great comparison. Brazil have a way better squad than Argentina on paper. But Argentina have better character than Brazil. Look at how Argentina had to fight through their games in the World Cup. They had to fight against Mexico. They had to score out of nowhere. you know. And I know Brazil also did against Switzerland. But the, the difference was that RG needed to do in a high-pressured game. That if they hadn't scored that goal, they would have been a el- they could have possibly been on the brink of elimination. RG didn't needed to win against Mexico, and Messi produced a d- insane solo goal out of nowhere. Okay, and that's the thing is that Brazil were never in a position where they had to push, 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 push. You know, because like I said, the opponents they had up until Croatia were easy. You know, South Korea, Switzerland. Serbia, you know, um, what is it called? Cameroon. They're not really up to Brazil's level. And this is one thing we'll talk about when we get to overall takeaways. Um, Brazil just never really were put in a position where we have to find a way to win. We have to find something. We have to do something out of nowhere. And that's my issue with Brazil is that they're so obsessed with the style of this Joga Benito football. I think it is actually didn't, it's not going to work all the time. Because as a champion, you're going to have to find ways to win games. There are going to be some games where you're not going to win pretty. You're going to have to win ugly. Argentina, for instance, had to win some games ugly. That win they had against, oh, what is it called? Australia wasn't really that pretty. They had to grind through the end. Emmy Martinez had to make that brilliant save. And this is where I'd say they were stubborn. They were stubborn. They were not willing to change. And we saw how that punished Brazil. And then Tite, man, you've got blood in your hands. The fact that you subbed out Bruno Guimaraes, you subbed out Vinicius Jr., you brought on Alexandro, you brought on Fred, and you concede. Why on the earth did you play defensive against Croatia? Croatia is a team that will is going to take any chance they can get. you know. And that's my issue with Brazil, is that it almost felt like Tito was trying to play like Manchester City in some ways. When he know that this team isn't really Manchester City. This team is Brazil. This isn't Manchester City. You know. And that's my issue with Tite. Is that you have to be responsible for those mistakes. Because why on the earth did you go. Why on the earth did you go um, defensive. You know. It just doesn't make sense. You know. And I think for Brazil man. It was just really really stupid. They brought those substitutions made the substitutions when it made no sense. You just have to close off the game, just seal out the game. And instead, they're trying to defend the lead. And it just didn't work. It just didn't work, man. And I, I don't know what TJ was thinking. So, very, very disappointment for Brazil. And we saw how Argentina were able to dismantle Croatia. You know? And Argentina went to the final, and obviously they won it. So, like, Brazil is, like, thinking to himself, okay, this is a really huge L for us. And Neymar still hasn't recovered. Right now, we're in July. The World Cup is in December. Neymar still hasn't fully recovered from this loss. He is still crying. He is still sad. And it shows how much it meant to the players. you know. And I just feel like for me, for Brazil, man, they just didn't get it. They just weren't able to get the, get it done. And for Croatia, man, kudos to them, man. Kudos to them. Because they defied the odds. Many people wrote Croatia off easily in the match. Saying that Croatia had no chance. Brazil were going to easily destroy them. This was in 2018. This was a Croatia team that was, that was very much finished. A lot of people were saying that. And we all know which team came out on top. It was Croatia that came out on top. So, 
Now let's talk about overall issues for Brazil. Overall. I think the overall things we have to look into Brazil is the first one is uh, the coaches. I think Tite, Dunga, Scalari, all three coaches failed for Brazil. All three coaches failed in their own respective ways. Tite failed and tried to be very much a tactical genius, trying to be like Pep when it didn't really work. Um, Scalari failed and tr basically, you know, he was just not that great. And then obviously Dunga failed trying to make Brazil play like a European style, which really didn't work. So, you know, the coaches are at fault. And then the squad, Brazil, you know, because you have a striker like R9 from 2006, and now your striker is Richarlison. And I'm sorry, with all due respect, Richarlison is not that guy. I'm sorry. He, he just isn't that guy. He isn't that guy, and he will never be that guy. Because, like I said, he can score all these goals in group stage. He can score all these nice, nice goals in group stage and, you know, do all this nice stuff. But when it comes time for high-pressure games, teams that are on the same kind of level as Brazil, he fails. I also didn't mention this here. Note how, notice how Brazil haven't even been in a single opponent of the knockout stage European. Brazil have yet to beat a European nation in the knockout stage of a World Cup. And I feel like that's a huge, huge alarming flag. You know, because like I said, for Brazil, they have to get a proper striker for the next World Cup. Because I'm sorry, you cannot roll to the next World Cup with Richarlison. You know, Pedro needs to be given opportunities. Gabigol needs to be given opportunities. We need to see that young Brazilian striker. Victor Roque, could he be that guy? I don't know. Brazil need to have a good striker for the next World Cup. Because that cost them in 2018 and also kind of cost them in 2022. And you could even somewhat also say 2014 as well. And the style. As I said earlier, Brazil were trying to play the European style when Brazil can't. Brazil can only play Joga Benito. Okay? But as much as I say Joga Benito, they also need to have a refinement. You can't just play just possession-based football and attacking football. Be defensive. Be a little bit pragmatic. I don't think Brazil have it in them to be pragmatic. And that's the concern I have with Brazil is that play the style that makes you successful, but tweak it a bit. You know, sometimes play pragmatic. Don't always play this beautiful football. Because like I said, guys, teams that always play the best rarely ever wins it. If that's just how life is. You know, teams that play the best football never usually go on to win it. In a knockout stage competition. So, anyways, I think I've said all my things I needed to say for this video. So, I hope you guys did enjoy let me know if I missed any major talking points for each of the World Cups, guys. I really do appreciate your guys' support, guys. I couldn't have done this without, guys. Remember, guys, to like and subscribe, guys. Help this channel grow. Help this spread the community around, guys. And make sure, guys, also comment down with your thoughts. Comment screen below. It really does help the channel grow, guys. And also, consider becoming a member of the channel, guys, to get access to members' videos and members' streams. I really do appreciate it. And, yeah, guys, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.